Uh, what's good YouTube? Gabe here back at it again with another deck profile. This time we're going to be doing the newly updated BT13 Dragonic Overlord deck. So um, there's a couple games on the channel that I had Destiny and some other stuff in it. That was made before set 13 officially dropped. The time of recording this is the Saturday after so it's been out for a day. I recorded those videos during sneak peek so that's why the deck wasn't done. So please just keep those comments in your pocket. So starter is still going to be Conro because it's like the best Kogro starter ever. You can search for a PG, a G guard, um, the other Conro just to guarantee you ride into the destiny. It's too good not to run. Next we are going for four copies of the new Dragonic Overlord, the destiny who is a great card, it's when you ride it from hand or at the beginning of your ride phase, you can Soul Blast 1 to choose any non-Vanguard circle and empty it. So basically it gets over resist because you choose the circle. It gets over locked cards if you're playing against the Link Joke and you just want to free up your circle. And it's a Soul Blast retire, so it's pretty cheap. And when you stride, you can Counter Blast 1 to retire an opponent's card and check top 7 for an overlord and add it to your hand. So what's nice about that is it gives you some consistency, you get to search your deck for cards, you can um, get other retire, you don't need to stride into an overlord like some subclan um, stride, uh, stride bonuses. So this is definitely a, a staple for of in almost every matchup. Next we go three copies of the Legend. The reason why we're running the Legend and not the other legions is because the X and the N take up a lot of grade 3 space that they don't want to deal with and the great and Neoflame takes up grade 2 space so I don't want to deal with that and the legend is nice for de for like Night Rose and Harry when they get rid of their own rear guards because if, the, if you're playing against a clan that has no rear guards at the end of their turn anyways you don't want to be on the destiny because the retire is going to mean nothing so this gets you um, on ride resources and it's so decent for the on-ride ability. It could do triple drive on Vanguard for its GB2, so it's a decent card. Next, we are going four copies of Emperor, Dragon Knight, and Hallam. It's still an Overlord build, so you're still going to be on an Overlord 100% of the time. You're probably going to be on a Restander, so it can get 16 to 21k without triggers by itself. Next, we are running four copies of these new 10Ks Glow Heater Dragon. So on ride or call, you reveal an, you either reveal an Overlord from your hand or have an Overlord Vanguard. If you don't have an Overlord anywhere, it loses 5K. But it's a 10K wall, so it's nice to have. And if you if you if you have a G unit with Overlord in its name that you're on, it gets 2K for each card in the damage zone. So about this card is what some people think is if. You, if you have an Overlord Heart, you get the 2k, but that's wrong. You the G unit has to have Overlord in its card name because it's his original card name and not just card name to begin with. So, poor card design. Should have just been uh, Overlord, period. Next, we're going four copies of Burning Horde Evolutes, which is the uh, 12k beater retrain, which is on call, you can Soul Blast 1 and reveal an Overlord to choose an opponent's card in the same golem and retire it. So what's nice about this is you don't actually need to put a card away so you can keep the card in your hand. So it's basically just a Soul Blast Retire. And it also has the uh, Glow Heater 2k for each damage if you have an Overlord Grade 4. The realistic this is probably going to go out for Burning Horn just because like the 2k doesn't really mean much because you're not going to be on Overlord's units a lot in the, like, the late game. And Burning Horn's retiring is kind of better because you can retire anything and not just a column and putting cards in the deck is nice, but it's nice for what it is. Um, next we're going four copies of Protect Orb, which is the unflippy PG. You still use Counter Blast in this deck, so get rid of them. Uh, four copies of Lizard General Conro. It's your ride consistency because you could pick an Overlord and get another Overlord. And you can retire it to give your Overlord Vanguard on attack counter charge two. So you can basically get four counter charges if you're on a restander, which is really good because you kind of burn through counter blast and it mitigates it like a lot. Next, we're going four copies of Lava Flow Dragon, who is your generic stride fighter because striding is kind of what you do with this deck. Next is two copies of Doombringer High Flame, who's a pretty nice card. It's on call. 
Choose up to two overlords from your drop and shuffle them into the deck. If you returned two cards, you can draw a card. So it gives you some hand power because it's basically a net plus one. And at the beginning of your ride phase, you can retire it to str um, you can stride for free if you go into an Overlord G unit. I don't really use that a lot, but like it's still nice to have. I'm probably gonna take it out for Balog though, because it just doesn't really do a whole lot. But it's it's nice, it's nice. Uh, four copies of Gatling Claw. I see a lot of people running Inspire Yell. I'm not a fan of Inspire Yell just because your rear guards don't really hit big numbers except for Nahalem, and Nahalem is only after the Vanguard attack, so even Nahalem isn't gonna be that big, so you can't really abuse um, numbers. I like the hand power that Gatling Claw gets, and also Gatling Claw gets the retire. So I, I might, I'm gonna try out Inspire Yell, but I like Gatling Claw because it guarantees a start, the retire of a start if you want to get rid of it ASAP, and it also gives you st Soul for Destiny's um, on ride ability. We got four copies of Dragon Dancer Tara because Positive Draco Kid and Advance Guard are ass. These new G uh, Heal Triggers are great because when you G Guard using them as the cost. You can bind it and another heal from drop zone to either soul charge or counter charge. So you can do that with any G guard, not just um, the like a G flip one. So you can basically you can effectively use this ability twice, and it also guarantees you a resource, which is really nice to have. So I love having her at four. Next, we're running four copies of Seal Dragon Biella because it's. Um, a flame dragon crit if you go into the desk, the legend, and it's the foil from the promo campaign, so it's shiny. And lastly, for the main deck, we are going four copies of Fire Chase Dragon, whose Kogros crit with a skill which they finally got because Rakshasa doesn't count its ass. It's during your turn. When your opponent in the same column as Fire Chase is rear guard is retired, you can retire Fire Chase to get rid of all other of your opponent's rear guards. So it's kind of act because you can't use it during your opponent's turn during your opponent's turn for G guard shenanigans, and you have to retire the column and not just anything, and it kills itself instead of moving to the soul. But it's a crit with a skill, so it's better than that than a vanilla. On to the G zone. We're going two copies of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Dragonic Overlord the Purge, who's a great card. We're only running two because it doesn't it doesn't finish games. If you're one of those people that thinks the Purge and Gancelot at four is what you need to do to be good, you're just wrong. Just because it's pricey doesn't mean it's a staple. So what it does is it's turn any face down G unit face up, choose an overlord from hand and move it into the soul. If your opponent has four or less damage, you deal them a damage and it can't be triggered. And it's GB3 is for each card in your opponent's damage zone. That's what the purge's drive check becomes. You basically can get a pentuple drive, which is great. It's only needed at two just to guarantee damage and pentuple driving when you push them to five is nice, but you don't really finish with it. Next, we're running one copy of Vortex Desire in case I'm going into the purge and I don't, in case I'm striding and I don't have an Overlord in hand. I'm not running the other um, uh, generic Blaze rare one, which is like Counter Blast 1, get, give on, hit, retire, and draw, or whatever. I'm not running that because I don't like the fact that it costs a Counter Blast because while we do have Conroe, it is kind of important to maintain Counter Blast. Vortex Desire is free. And yeah, it gives pressure with that, so that's why I still like it. Next, we're running three copies of Flare Arm Ziegenberg. Still only running three like the last um, deck, pro deck profile because you rail I, I don't really use its um, Persona Flip ability a lot, but it's nice to have just in case. And it's a it can basically restand for free at GB3, so it's a good card. It's a really nice card, and it's how you finish games with... Overlord because the purge doesn't really do it. Next we're running two copies of the ace. Still running the ace because Doombreaker can go into it for free. And there are times, like if your opponent has a full board of like resist or whatever and you can't really get rid of it with Ziegenberg, I like going into the ace because it can restand. Also the ace gets power from its restand which is pretty cool. So I, I like it and Doombreaker gets it for free. So. I like it. And the Destiny means you can search for a discard target, which is cool. Running one copy of the GB8, 
because it's a GB8, it's a field nuke, 10k to all rear guards, and if you killed three 10k in a crit to itself, it's free, so do it. The last G unit is Seabreeze because this is kind of a stride based deck, so it's Seabreeze is pretty good to have. I'm not running Drachma because Drachma is ass. Please drop a hashtag zero dragons are overrated. Even if it was like $10, I probably still wouldn't run it. It's just not good, and Seabreeze is more important. G guards running one copy of Obsalon, so if you're playing against like Tachikaze or um, Shadow Paladin when they retire their own rear guards during the battle phase and you don't want to use Defeat Flare, it's basically a free one card G guard because it gets 10k for each empty circle and it's just, it's really shieldy. So running three copies of Denial Griffin because Denial Griffin's really fucking good and you can just stop things from, ha stop attacks no matter how big they are if they don't have resist and yeah, I've been considering cutting it down to two and running one a Sile Orb just because it's free, but because of Conroe and the other, the G Guard that, um, because of Conroe and Tara, I don't really find Counterblast being an issue, so I still like running Denial Griffin. And lastly, we are running two copies of Defeat Flare because thanks to Destiny, it's so easy to turbo out Overlords from your deck and putting them into the drop for striding that I use Defeat Flare twice in a game pretty frequently, that I think it's definitely worth running where it is. So I like it, and back row wiping is great, especially in like ZTV and Blasters to get rid of Flogal and Hypnodo Sheep. So I think it's a great card, I love having it up too, and I definitely think it's worth it. So uh, that was it for Overlord. Stay tuned for deck and send games, and see you next time. Au revoir my dudes.